tell you this. There is no coincidence, and nothing happens by accident. The great teachers understand this. They know that Jesus was not perturbed by the crucifixion, but expected it. He could have walked away, but he did not. He could have stopped the process at any point. He had that power, yet he did not. He allowed himself to be crucified in order that he might stand as man's eternal salvation. Look, he said, at what I can do. Look at what is true, and know that these things and more shall you also do. For have I not said ye are gods? Yet you do not believe. If you cannot, then believe in yourself. Believe in me. Such was Jesus' compassion that he begged for a way and created it to so impact the world that all might come to heaven, self-realization, if in no other way than through him. For he defeated misery and death, and so might you. The grandest teaching of Christ was not that you shall have everlasting life, but that you do. Not that you shall have brotherhood in God, but that you do. Not that you shall have whatever you request, but that you do. All that is required is to know this, and life can show up no other way for you than that way in which you think it will. You think it into being. This is the first step in creation. God the Father is thought. Your thought is the parent which gives birth to all things. The first law is that you can be, do, and have whatever you can imagine. The second law is that you attract what you fear. Emotion is the power which attracts. That which you fear strongly, you will experience. An animal, which you consider a lower form of life, knows immediately if you are afraid of it which you consider an even lower form of life, respond to people who love them far better than to those who couldn't care less. None of this is by coincidence. There is no coincidence in the universe. Only a grand design. Emotion is energy in motion. When you move energy, you create effect. If you move enough energy, you create matter. Matter is energy conglomerated, moved around, shoved together. If you manipulate energy long enough in a certain way, you get matter. Every master understands this law. It's the alchemy of the universe. It's the secret of all life. Thought is pure energy. Every thought you have, have ever had, and ever will have, is creative. The phrase, wherever two or more are gathered in my name, becomes much more meaningful. Of course, when entire societies think a certain way, very often astonishing things happen, not all of them necessarily desirable. For instance, a society living in fear very often actually, inevitably, produces in form that which it fears most. Similarly, large communities or congregations often find miracle-producing power in combined thinking, or what some people call common prayer. And it must be made clear that even individuals, if their thought, prayer, hope, wish, dream, fear, is amazingly strong, can, in and of themselves, produce such results. Jesus did this regularly. He understood how to manipulate energy and matter, how to rearrange it, how to redistribute it, how to utterly control it. What you most fear is what will most plague you. Fear will draw it to you like a magnet. All your holy scriptures contain the clear admonition, fear not. Do you think this is by accident? The laws are very simple. Thought is creative. Fear attracts like energy. 
Love is all there is. Love is the ultimate reality. It is the only, the all. The feeling of love is your experience of God, other than itself. Though in strictest terms, God is, I am, all that is. Fear is the other end of love. 